Hi guys, I am officially in Goa. We took the bus into Goa this time. So we left yesterday evening from Bombay and we arrived in Goa this morning. As many of you might already know, I am Goan, which means that Goa is my native place and it's the place where all of my ancestors come from. I come from a village in South Goa. It's kind of interior, so it's not anywhere near the beach. If you associate Goa with beaches, this is quite far from any beach, but it's really, really green. And it's that kind of area where everybody knows everybody. I'm born and brought up in Mumbai, as are my parents. But my grandparents all grew up in this village and I'm staying at the house that I spent a lot of time in growing up, which is the house my maternal grandmother grew up in and it's about 100 years old because I've been asking all my relatives like when was this house built and when was that house built and I was gonna start vlogging from there but we just ended up coming to meet another bunch of relatives like cousins and all last minute so I'm currently at their house I've stayed here also a little bit not as much as the other place but this is the house where my maternal grandfather grew up this is about 10 years older than that house. My agenda for this trip is going to be to just enjoy the lovely greenery and the much purer air. Just chill out, read a little bit, relax a little bit, eat lots of delicious Goan food, which I've already started on. I'm also flying the drone a lot because I can do this in Goa, it's a village. So that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Coming into Goa as a child, I didn't really enjoy it. We spent so much of vacation time here and I kind of disliked it. But I realized as I was growing up that it was such a unique cultural experience because even though I live in a really big city, I also got to experience what proper village life is like. And I know that not a lot of other people can say the same thing. It's unspoiled by outsiders. As of now, I can see things slowly changing a little bit but I want to have this place to myself for a little longer. We had a nice first day, right mom? Yes, correct. It was supposed to be, I think, like a quieter day, but totally unplanned things happened, which made it even better. And now the sun has just about set. And it's so beautiful right now, isn't it? Yeah, it's it is. so stunning. And you must have made this walk like many times in your life, right? Yeah. Since I've been a child, I had accompanied my father. This is my uh, father's side ancestral home and we are going back to my mother's side ancestral home. It's so just the perfect time for a nice walk. There is no heat. It's going to feel lovely. Can hopefully we'll reach back before the sun sets. Either way, I feel like really, really safe in this region. So it's bright and early day 2 in Goa except it's not too early it's past 10 a.m. and it's not too bright it's pretty cloudy mom did you carry the umbrella I did okay nice so we are heading up uh, to the village church today what is the church called mom it is called savior of the world and in portuguese it's called salvador the moon there is a is this a nearby church like right here very close we are like heading there right now <laughs> So 
Goa was like my first introduction to animals, which is like dogs and cats, but also farm animals, and that's how I've always been pretty comfortable with them. And today I knew it was a good walk because we just walked hundred meters, and we saw two beautiful cats. They're significantly more wild here, so I couldn't touch them, but it was still something that made me happy. And we met a stray dog just outside our house. Now he's followed us for about a kilometer, and almost every house has a dog of their own. So when we pass by, they're getting really angry at him. So this is the church we were just talking about, and Mum, you know we have a painting of this church, right? Correct. We bought it because Mario Miranda lives in this lived in this village, and he had painted it. Yeah, yeah. Mario Miranda is one of my favorite artists because. My grandfather knew him, and I brag about that for some reason. But mainly just because he paints scenes that are very, very familiar to me. Like, not just a sense of familiarity, but they are places that I've been to, like the chapel on the mount, mm -hmm. and this is the church. So he must have stood somewhere here to paint it, right? To get an idea of the whole facade of the church. Yeah, definitely. Because yeah. Uh, it is visible from here very well. Yeah, there's a ground behind us. We're standing in a ground. So he was probably somewhere here. The cemetery is beyond. Oh, there's a cemetery here. Yeah, okay, they're beyond. Oh, nice. This one on the way going to the church, and now we saw her. Oh, I don't know if it's a girl or a boy coming back as well. Oh, hi! Hi! Oh my god, I love her! I love you! Hello. Come here. Yeah, yeah. You're my favorite, and you probably have a name of your own, but okay. Okay, but I think I want to name the cat myself too. So after we got back from like the church trip and everything, we were just chilling and we had someone come visit us. These are not relatives, but family friends that I've known since I was a very very little kid. So the two little boys had proper big Portuguese names: Antonio and Francisco. We just said bye to them. Now we're walking back to the house, and I was showing them the house opposite our house. Like when I was little, this was still an intact house, but right now uh, it's completely sort of the roof has fallen down and it's totally overgrown. <laughs> so they thought it was haunted. <laughs> The girl who came to visit us kindly bought us these, which are banana fritters that she made herself. They're sort of like banana-based pancakes, you could say. So, mom and I are snacking on the fritters as well as some beef samosas that we picked up near the church. Fritters are so good, no? They're very yummy. Or uh, what are they called in Konkani? You said filos. Filos. <laughs> kind of has occurred to me. That we're already on day two, and I haven't spoken about the house I'm staying at yet. And I wanted to start the vlog with speaking about it, but life has different plans. The village that I'm from is famous for having like really old Portuguese houses. Almost all of the houses here were built in the early 1900s, but now some new houses also exist, but most of them are really old. Now I was trying to ask my mum exactly when this house was built. We're not sure. It's probably sometime in the 1920s. That that would be our best guess. Yes, maybe a little bit earlier. So it'll be completing a hundred years soon. It's really high up because the house itself is kind of on a hilly region. You can't confuse it with any of the houses in the area for that reason, because this one's on a hill and all of the others aren't. 
this house is kind of like a farm i guess in a way because there have always been a lot of animals in and around the house and it does have the traditional sort of roof tiles and it's surrounded by lush greenery on all sides like it's ridiculously green if you don't believe me let me just show you <laughs> what our lunch looks like today it's a little different from what we usually eat in goa because we ordered this from like a takeaway place and this is a simple traditional goan thali there's a little bit of a vegetable salad there on the top and the right you have sort of a brinjal based veggie there's rice and there's a little bit of a coconut juice based curry there's also fish with the coconut curry but i am not a fish person so I have just skipped the fish and having a nice veggie meal. I had a little nap after lunch because I'm just sleeping so much better here. It's not like I sleep badly at home. It's just that at home lifestyle is so sedentary, and when I come here, there's a lot more physical activity to be done. Like we walk so much and all, that your body gets tired and you just sleep so much nicer. Now I am sipping on a cup of tea and watching like the last rays of the sun disappear. I have to say I like it much more in Goa especially the village part of Goa uh, when it's daytime because when it's night you get a lot more mosquitoes not as much as Kerala or anything when I had gone to Fort Kochi last year the mosquitoes were really bad but there's still too many here and there are all sorts of creatures and critters that come out only at night lizards are just some of them but there are even more so after nightfall We do have electricity inside obviously but I'm just like a little more cautious of where I go and I tend to like just chill out on the bed or in one area so I don't move around too much I think it's our first proper sunny morning, correct? Correct. These two days uh, there was rain and completely gloomy morning. Yeah, really cloudy. We had drizzles and everything, and the sun did peek out now and then. But today the sun's been out since morning. It's really bright. Feels cheery, but then you know you feel tired sooner when it's this hot. Of course. Right now we are just making an excursion in the area. Behind me is the church that I talked about yesterday. Like. Not the church we went to, but the one that's really close to the house. The house is just over there, and the church is behind me. I'm going to be going to a bakery today. Like I grew up eating the eclairs from this bakery. When I was an adult, I realized that people had been coming from far and wide in Goa. Like I am not exaggerating, just to get eclairs from this bakery. It's really, really good. So we're going to go there. got the goods in this little wrap paper with string i'll show you guys very soon so that house over there it hasn't been a house for a long time right you said it was a factory or something when you were growing up when we were small they used to make jams pickles and all that stuff i remember you telling me that it's haunted though my mother used to tell me yes <laughs> i've never seen or heard from anyone else my mother told me It's always been like a ghost town though. I haven't seen any activity here in years. I 
as expected the morning heat can it kills you even if you're out for just 10 minutes which is how long we were out we stepped out for a couple of errands we had to run to the general store and stuff but i was all about getting my hands on these eclairs and luckily i did get them because it's still kind of early in the day these are the famous eclairs that i'm speaking of that have people come to this bakery from far and wide it's kind of like bread on the outside with a little bit of vanilla custard filling and some chocolate glaze on top now if we are strictly speaking baking terms these are not really eclairs and these are more profiteroles but over here they've just always been known as eclairs mm, oh my god this is so good you guys but i think i'm quickly going to go inside and enjoy them before i, I literally melt it's really hot <laughs> it's the evening of day 3 and my mum doesn't want to talk in this vlog, I don't know why. So she's keeping really busy here but I am definitely getting a little bit bored because I can't find that much stuff to do and also I'm not getting any like 3G signal at all. Very little if I come onto the stairs, nothing inside. So I'm going a little bit stir crazy to be honest. Now we are doing something kind of fun, we are going somewhere. <laughs> so we're just waiting for them in the church compound the sun is setting and that's what's up do you have anything to add okay On the way back from the people that we went to visit, Margaret really kindly drove us from the longer but slightly scenic route. So we came to the river. Now I'm sure you guys can't see anything because it's really dark right now. The sun has set but I did get enough time for one super quick drone flight. afternoon also because it's been extra hot today probably the hottest since we've arrived in Goa but I thought I'll just show you guys my lunch today's simple Goan lunch is rosa kori which is coconut milk based curry with prawns and some chilies it's quite mild rice a prawn chili fry as well as this uh, okra or pindi vegetable whatever you call it we usually call it lady finger and it has a ton of names with a lot of coconut and I think some onion. 
simple go and lunches may not really be Instagram worthy, but I've been enjoying them so so much. If I mentioned I was having a lazy day before, it was ten times harder to move at all. Much less get changed after that lunch. Wasn't it a good lunch, Mum? It was a very good lunch. But then every lunch here is a good lunch. Every dinner is a good dinner. It's good. <laughs> it's very good food wise. So I think we kind of rested for a bit. Now we've gotten presentable and we're heading out. Both of the destinations that we're heading to, we're going near the church and then we'll be heading to a relative's place. I've already gone those places in this vlog itself, so it's nothing new to show you guys. But yeah, I will show you some little snaps along the way. Why not? And the sun is finally setting and it's become a little better, right? It's not setting, it's right up there. I mean, but it's not its not up there like afternoon, so that's why I'm saying setting. Yeah, it's behind the trees. Yeah, so it feels pleasant finally, because today was a bright day, a hot day. We hiked up to the church here and I say hike up because it was quite a lot uphill, right? Yeah, it's always uphill from the home. But what I'm finding really amusing is it was so hot, even the structure that I'm sitting on is still burning my butt. But in the few minutes since we've reached here, the weather has turned so much and it's gotten really dark and it's continuously thundering and I think it's going to rain pretty soon. By the way, mum, can you please tell us what is the Konkani word for thunder? Godgod. So funny, it's a literal onomatopoeia. Every time mom is speaking to someone in Konkani and she says Godgod, I just <laughs> I, I just feel like laughing because I mean it, it doesn't get old, at least to me. I just find it so funny. <laughs> I think this guy is my favorite. His name is Popsy and he's a dog from the street that this family has rescued. We've known him for years and I remember the first time when we met him, he was super grumpy. But since then he's become such a love bug and he's just adorable. I don't really vlog much at night here because it's not that well lit and I feel like the place gets a lot more creepier and scarier as night falls. This city girl is finding it a little bit hard to deal but those were all of my school vacations also and I survived so I will survive now. I didn't even think that I was going to have this much to vlog about but lo and behold I've spoken a lot so I will end this vlog today and part 2 will come at you guys next week. If you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more and don't forget to share your comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!